Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we're back to another recording of Magic the Gathering Arena. Today is Friday, October 25th, and seems like every program and every software and every service is coinciding to ensure that every stream now starts later and later after I hit the start streaming button with the chat not working effectively, the um, untapped uh, .gg deck tracking app wanting me to restart Magic the Gathering Arena because Magic the Gathering Arena updated uh, and just in general lots and lots of problems and on top of plenty of problems I've had in the past couple days with just a uh, ton of my s SSD hard drive space got used up I think in a backup just temp files that weren't being properly managed um, and then just I have a ton of videos that need to be uploaded and then I had the uploading software uploader working and it only got to about three before it skipped one so um, I think the system there is going to have to be adjusted so that it only uploads one video at a time and I'm gonna have to try again. Meanwhile, while the uploading was going on, my computer was running incredibly slow, probably my fault for running a backup at the same time. Uh, still trying to get Duplicati, the old version, to work and it doesn't seem like it's gonna work any better than Duplicati, the new version. Uh, uh, full computer backups may just not be something that's reasonable incapable of being done these days uh it may just be that microsoft has it right where you should just back up the important stuff that they think is important things in the my documents folder and such and get rid of the vast majority of the stuff that you don't care about um but inherently that means you would have to reinstall everything which could be years if not decades worth of work uh on your computer one by one instead of just being say, being able to say hey here's an update I mean here's a backup just restore this backup which is more how I would like to work with computers I'd like it to always be iterative incremental backups full backups uh, not a system where if your hard drive fails then you have to spend a week reinstalling everything so while that was going on, I was doing a Lego. I haven't done a Lego in quite a long time, but in the midst of that, I also burnt myself on my oven cooking some food. So I have two fingers on my left hand burnt, and I have some kind of blister forming on my pointer finger, my mouse finger on my right hand. So those, my hands are not doing well this week, and so I guess it's good I can take a break after this. Uh, this is a lot of start banter. Guess we don't need to re-roll anything. Um, the new thing to say here is that the band list happened. Uh, and apparently I did have this Field of the Dead card. And so it gave me a Mystic Rare card. Uh, I assume, like, it, it seemed like the way that was depicted, it, it seemed to very much like I did have that card, which I can only assume I got just randomly. It, it would be weird if everybody had it, if they had bought the Thrones of Eldraine. Um, it seems to me like that Field of the Dead card in particular was just a huge mistake, and frankly, <sighs> Magic the Gathering Wizards of the Coast have been at this for decades so making huge mistake cards is not really acceptable uh here we go if you buy a throne of eldron planeswalker deck you get a code to unlock in the entire deck in magic the gathering arena so unless i have already put in these codes looks like if anybody out there plays regular magic and they buy this and they give me the code that would be great i imagine these aren't even really uh, individualized codes but even, uh, so it might be a case of you would just direct message that to me or you could direct message it to me through Steam or Twitter 
uh, and I'll see it if you do it through Facebook. I will never see it. Uh, one time deal, 10 boosters across the current standard and a thousand gems. Uh, wonder how much that would cost. Okay, I'm back. I had to edit out a section here where I clicked on one of the links here and it popped up credit card information. Um, yeah, that that's stupid. I'll, I'll have to remember that, like, to be more careful. Anyways, I was talking about a lot of things have changed here. We There's this new Brawl launch event. And by the way, this is not like I'm on the advanced play mode. So they really do want us to do a um, this Brawl launch event. I think this might be free. And if anything, it might have a chance of actually putting us in this limited season reward. Seems like we're going to be gold f tier 4. Season ends in 6 days. Monday... We're going to do whatever is required if we don't do it now. Um, I do have enough gold. It does occur to me, though, that... Um, so, the only thing that's messed up as far as the card that was missing a card is this one. This imported deck, and I imagine this one was always uh, a problem. Let's see, this one, delete. Let's just go ahead and delete that for clean Luna's sake. So, there's this new bundle that's featured for $10. Um, yeah. And then you can spend real world gold to get a bunch of skins under the featured or you can rent, use the premium currency to get a bunch of packs uh, so right now I could open about 14 new packs on this expansion or I could s purchase I suppose one two three four of the avatars yeah so I could take my pick of the four avatars of which there seems like there's one, two, three, four, five. Uh, this is weird. I'm rolling the wrong way. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's twelve. So. I could go crazy and just purchase all the avatars and then you'd be done with the avatars. Uh, odds are they're not going to bother to put in any more avatars. As far as mastery goes, next level we level up would give us an orb. And then we're at level 40, so we're probably going to make it um, to at least the uncommon Fox Fae. But it's still a journey to 90 but I think we also have plenty of time uh, so we're doing fine I'm not really doing the daily quests though like I really don't have have the energy or enthusiasm for that anyways that's more than enough set up let's see what this brawl launch event is is this free entry no dive into a brawl build a deck of legendary creatures and play planeswalker which serve you uh, your commander and fight your way to victory following cards are banned Scorpius spyglass click here to learn more about brawl so if we get one win we would get this card skin two wins we would get this card skin three wins we get one card in one card style I guess you get these cards and the card styles Four wins. Then five wins would be this. So. The problem with this. Is I don't know if Brawl. Means anything here. As far as this. Like this limited rank. 
You must play a game this season to receive this reward. So limited means what? I think you have to play ranked draft Eldrin for that, which would be 5,000. Uh, which that does seem like even with zero wins you get an entire pack instead of an entire card. So let's try let's try this and then Monday we'll do a ranked draft. 100 gold. And then choose your deck. Okay. So what do I want to play? Just new deck, I guess. And what if we did this? Hmm. Yeah, like no clue. No freaking clue. We can suggest lands. We can look for multi colored cards. Let's see. So let's just grab all of these and see how this works. Can we get a 60 card deck of just straight up multicolored cards? Uh, that has 41. And so now if I just go suggest lands. Alright, that's that. And then... Uh, how can we get regular lands? There we go. So. Let's see. Just picking all the magical lands possible and it puts me at 41. Hmm. Hmm. And I don't understand what suggest lands versus regular lands means, but I guess we'll. One, two. If we had 41, we needed 19, so let's, let's go with several planes. Let's go with nine planes. Well, you already got nine plus eleven planes. Yeah, that's a lot of land. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think we, you need twenty land. This is just an example of not knowing what you're doing. All right. So blue and then white characters, and then let's start thinking like it seems like brawl you can only have one card of anything hmm so let's just go through this hmm and I guess having a card skin probably doesn't indicate that a card is worth playing. Hmm. Hmm. See now I'm at 77. And I assume that the order of these cards are the cost. So I've gotten a bunch of really expensive cards probably need not so much expensive cards and I guess you probably don't want cards that don't say anything of which there's a surprisingly small amount of cards here 
the the problem here is this is just going to take too much time and frankly i've got too much to do to to go through each of these cards and try and read them and that's where this boils down to is there's this long path set ahead of you when you're playing magic for the first time at least for in my case for a very long time uh, so there's there's problems with that yeah um, okay so island plus planes would be 16 and then if I got rid of all of these planes all right that seems like that's probably more than enough land considering hmm So, then it becomes a matter of what do we want to get rid of otherwise, because we still have a ridiculous amount. So let's just get rid of the most expensive things. We'll just, I suppose, playing as fast as possible. as cheap as possible and yeah it's, that's still probably too too many Let's go ahead and get rid of some land because we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six plus that would be ten. That would be nineteen. I think the recommended amount of land you're supposed to have is somewhere around fourteen. So I probably could get rid of a couple more of these. And that still leaves me with like fifteen cards. Hmm. Which, honestly, if I just get rid of the things that require blue, this could be just a pure white deck. And then I can get rid of things that... Let's see. That probably don't, don't matter at that point. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Hmm. Get rid of that. That leaves us at 63. Get rid of that one. And then get rid of that one. And then that just leaves us with a bunch of planes. Nine planes mana. Which are going to be difficult to use, considering all we've got is that. And so we're one card short. So we'll get rid of that most expensive one. And that leaves us exactly at 60. So we've got this 60 deck here that is just built around randomness like just a random idiot picking cards do i in any legitimate way deserve to win even one victory here the answer is clearly no uh, is there any sympathy i deserve because i don't have enough cards I don't think in the Brawl format there is, because I think the Brawl format was giving me one of each of those cards anyways. 
So it really is just a matter of, because I don't know what the cards are, uh, I don't know which cards to play. So I, I'm just kind of left with not knowing what to do. What is this thing? What is this? Let's see. Artifact, instant sorcery spell. Uh, your opponent cast cost one more to cast until your next turn, turn prevent all planeswalkers. Um, okay, so how come I can play this right now? Um, I can't cast, cast that right now. But it does seem like I, I have set myself up well. Let's see, cost two mana, three mana. And it just makes everything else, everybody else, uh, cost more. Gideon Planeswalker? I guess. Hmm. Enchanted creature without flying. Enchanted creature can't attack or block, and the creature can't activate its abilities. Alright, fine. There we go. Maybe there was something more I could have done there. Probably. Yeah. Put that on the field. And... No attacks this turn. I want to take this a little seriously. Uh, I've curated a lot of the games that have come out on Steam, but there's still plenty of games because we had things left over this entire week. Um, it makes it kind of obvious that consistently there's not enough time to uh, cover things uh, like what's coming out on Xbox Live. My Logitech settings apparently didn't save when I rebooted my computer earlier today, so there goes that setup. I'll, I'll deal with that, I guess, later. Because that... That was helpful. In fact, I was thinking what I might do, and I, this would be a weird improvement and hampering to my own success, though. It would just save time. Is If I had a program that would just, every five seconds, click a button right here, it, or every 30 seconds, just to say, um, let's see. Yep. Sacrifice your card, you got to. Although, does he? Actually, I didn't. I, I played wrong there. Hmm. Does this have, like, some way it could tap other things? No. I don't know. Yeah. Just wasted a spell. But you know, if in a in some of these scenarios, when you're auto passing, it brings up a new thing that that like it, when you click this button, auto pass. It brings up a new thing because something new has happened, and th there's just a lot of weir weirdness um, in the etiquette of playing Magic the Gathering that that ends up causing some slowdown in how this plays. 
um, a slowdown that I think could be addressed somewhat. Um, with just faster timers, just things that say, okay, you're not paying attention or you don't care, so we're going to auto-resolve. Um, uh, I know on higher level play, having a game auto-resolve for you would be bad and cause you to lose when you really didn't deserve to lose and, and kind of break the whole system as far as how magic works. Uh, but it, it kind of works right now. Um, it, it works for most players. Let's see. Three damage to tapped creature. Or five damage to a tapped creature. Now we have a defender. Hmm. Destroy an artifact. Hmm. What does this one do? Create two one one tokens. There we go. Ton of characters. To get some extra life. So yeah, the white mana strategy can make sense. I, I kind of know what it is, but it's heal yourself up, heal yourself up, and try to get a bunch of people on the field. Hmm. But I've got a ton of spells also. What does this one do? At the beginning of combat turn, choose up to one target creature you control until the end of the creature gets plus two plus two. Um, no blocks. What does this one do? It's just a creature. What does this one do? Wasn't there something that I had to do against a tapped? No, that just taps a prompt, a card. Okay, so which one do we want to exile? Hmm. Apparently, that has vigilance, anyways. Take that. Hmm. And then, yeah, we'll hold on to that creature. Although I probably should have scryed, come to think of it. Let's see. Putting this on the um, putting this on the field would probably be a good move at some point pretty quickly here. Otherwise he's just going to overwhelm my characters. Alright. Yeah, there's really no reason to have not played that earlier. As soon as I had the three 
three mana. I should have played it. It's hard to be a genius surrounded by lesser minds. Hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Prevent all damage that would be dealt to or dealt by target permanent and opponent controls. Hmm. I don't understand why you would want that, though. Hmm. Because you'd kind of need something that that would have trample for this to be useful. Hmm. So its main ability is really the only thing I think that matters. Okay. Hmm. So I'm just stalling here for more than anything else just to see uh, if maybe I'll get frustrated uh, sure no blocks can I use this ability? Command. What, what does this do? What does command do? It just goes back to the hand. Interesting. Is this something about Brawl that this works this way? Or... Hmm. I don't think I have any creatures that would have adventure. So we have a 3-2 and a th so let's just put this on the field. Hmm. Now this costs more. Uh, what would I want to attack with something? Uh, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and attack with this. I'm so low on mana, but even being low on mana, you're, you're still kind of fine. It's a weird situation. And probably if I was doing the math, it, it would make sense to, to just attack. Let's see. Plus two, plus two, and you gain one life for each turn. this one do gains first strike until the end of the turn hmm. Take this vigilance hmm. and I know we're not talking about the news there's there, there is games to talk about but I really want to try and figure out this deck first so we're just playing straight magic right now. To which I imagine some people are, are very happy just to see that instead of uh, all the video game news. Alright, well, it does make sense to block. 
so let's block with one. Hmm. Well, that wouldn't do much. I mean, it would give a 2 2 as much as this would. And if, I, if the idea here is to just gain enough health to survive until they run out of cards, that would be 37 cards. So if that's the strategy I'm playing for, it's, it's a pretty dumb one. particularly too difficult either because all he's doing is attacking with this one character this is what's so weird about magic though is that like if you even have something slightly strong it usually only has two three maybe four health uh, if it's a defender and there's usually enough things on the field uh, for that to not make sense. Plus two, plus two. And we get plus one. We might as well do this. Why did I give it to that? I should have given it to that. That would have been sm smarter. Hmm. Hmm. So now I think I have to attack with these two. Just to confuse them. Just because I played the game wrong. This one had first strike or prevented damage. So, I guess the idea that you can make cards be immune to one specific color really does eliminate the idea of doing a single color deck uh, ever. You, you always have to do a combo color deck, don't you? Um, otherwise, you would just not have a strategy. My path. Hmm. Prevents all non-combat damage that would be dealt to you or other permanents. You control exile target creature with four or greater. Hmm. Hmm. Who's attacking here? A two-two. Is there something that could, that could attack that wouldn't wouldn't die? Hmm. 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 
Yeah, you cast another spell. Th I am actually oddly succeeding. Um, um, at at just wasting a bunch of his spell cards. I. But I, I don't know if that really is just a case of him specifically just not caring, either. I'm surprised I made it this far. And I, I guess it's, it's victories until you win, or... And so one strike and you're out in brawl mode? I, I'm guessing? I, 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 it really didn't explain the rules to this, it just said click here to learn more about brawl. Um, what, so, let's see, hmm. what do we wanted to fit, do with that one, hmm. first strike on that one. I've got a strategy here. Uh, though, I do have a strategy. If I play this, then I can pay two life to draw a card. No, that won't really do anything. Five damage to tap card. Hmm. You're gonna do something? You're gonna resolve that? Hmm. Like, honestly, I think the only way I'd win here is if, if the guy just got bored. So, I think that puts me in a decent position to start covering the news. I'm going to go over to my Twitter while this is happening because I, I think I can call this as, uh, as I've lost. Attacks, I guess. So I'm scrolling through my Twitter feed while it's a t it's asking me what to block with. Um, just go ahead and block with that. I hope one of my daily quests is play a bunch of white cards, otherwise the, that would be a little bit of a pointless maneuver to uh, pick the white color cards, white mana cards. Uh, I guess I just have to call them white cards. Like, yeah, in, in 2019 if you're gonna remake Magic the Gathering you'd almost certainly get rid of white and black and you would change it instead to light and dark and then you would have light be a yellow and dark be a purple. This is exactly how they do it in Destiny Child, where the other cards 
colors or classes are red for fire, green for earth, and um, blue for water. More of an elemental concept instead of a color concept. And it's not like that you could really introduce more colors. Okay. So... Hmm. Apparently I get to keep playing? With a terrible deck, I guess. I guess that's what we're doing. So let's start covering the video game news because we're going to have, uh, we, we need to just get, get rid of uh, all the news. I, I don't want any leftover from Monday. All right, so you can free Mulligan. All right, well, I will free Mulligan for sure. And then I guess I don't free Mulligan this time. Um, so if you free Mulligan, is that because you go first? I don't think so. I don't think there's a free Mulligan if you go first. This must be a brawl thing. So, I guess maybe, yeah, it says he's, he's allowed to free Mulligan up here too. So we'll Mulligan again. And then we'll keep six. And then we'll put something that's not super important. So, you can't just play this, no. But it just is always available to you. Interesting. It's an interesting move. Of course, I'm... Unless this is a modified cost, which it isn't. There's not a lot I can do. So we're going to start with one of those games today. Techcraft has an article. Fun Bag Fantasy 2 continues the adventure in, at Mana Gamer. Clearly this is a lewd adult game. Uh, Mana Gamer in particular being one that is heavily pushing selling uncensored versions uh, of games. Um, can't block and it's activated abilities can't be activated but it's activated abilities hmm. well I suppose we could do that hmm. um, yeah manga gamer has been pushing a, a narrative that might be true. I mean, it, it seems like it's mostly likely true that Steam, Steam is not allowing completely uncensored versions of their games. Uh, there was a game that was seemingly extremely popular. Um, so we can gain this one. Um, uh, that was called like made order 28 or something like that uh, that really was nothing but an adult game simula uh, sex simulator and the censored version was allowed on Steam but allegedly from what the creator the uncensored version wasn't allowed on Steam which kind of defeats the purpose of that game even being in existence uh, I don't think there's it, I kept looking at it and seeing like it was getting highly reviewed but then it, to me it looked like it was very much a low effort uh, nothing of a game type of game uh, and I guess that's because all the real content was removed and then I guess maybe people were reviewing it because they were patching patching back in the content uh, well this is gonna be a quick loss Hmm. Hmm. Suppose there is some possibility that that discarding cards to your graveyard might be a strategy. 
I haven't seen a deck that does that yet. Uh, it still feels like very few games are getting rejected, so maybe the message just has come across clearly. Um, and I still wouldn't really trust man manga gamers' word on the subject because clearly they're trying to just push people to buy the game directly from their own store so they don't have to pay the 30% cut. In a lot of ways it feels like it is just the complaints that a lot of people that jumped to the Epic Game Store were making that that Steam's industry standard 30% cut was unfair somehow. Um, could I change my deck if I wanted to? Like, I don't think so. I guess I could. Guess you're not stuck with it. Dive into a brawl, build a deck around the legendary creator in Planeswalker, which serves you as your commander, and fight your way to victory. The following cards are banned. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand how this works. Is, is it a time thing? Do I have a certain amount of time to, to play this? Or it, is it literally just keep on playing until you give up? Um, I feel like I'm not accomplishing any of the daily quests. And I really don't have time to play extra games on top of a daily quest. Um, so, I feel like I'm in a weird position here. Let's keep all seven. That's, that's probably as good as you're going to get is two planes cards to start with. Uh, next, we have a game on Steam here called Village Bus Driver Simulator, which is, I guess, Bus Driver Simulator, or Bus Simulator uh, clone. It's $1.95 discounted, English only. It's 2% discounted. Uh, yep. There's certainly nothing there of interest to me. So, what does this one do? So, if I had another charmed stray, which you can't have, which means a card like this is pretty useless. Uh, Hmm. I still need one more mana. What does this do? Players have no maximum hand size. Each player draws X cards. Each opponent puts a number of cards equal to the number of cards in their hand from the top of their library into the grant. Graveyard. Ooh, that's an interesting card. Folio of Fancies. What's his special ability? Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card, or then you may put a land. Oh man, I, I thought I was going to learn something there. Okay. So yes, victories still are being counted. It's just we don't have... We're supposed to be playing red and green. Or black and red cards. And so we get this card. And the skin, which is nice. I guess we keep going. So this might just be a scenario where you keep on playing forever and... As long as you have the tenacity to keep on playing and the luck that other people will surrender, you can just get to the end and get all the cards. And for the entrance fee, which I thought was only a thousand, like a thousand's not really a bad amount of uh, gold to guarantee you five cards. Um, I guess it's one card short than a card pack, and it's probably not guaranteeing you any um, any 
of of the wild cards so buying a thousand pack is still probably your better bet in the early days of an expansion uh, but you're also getting card skins if you're interested in the card skins meanwhile we have a game on steam called lost home battle of island which is a obviously low effort name probably not from a na native english maker looks like it's a slightly po more polished and average asset flip zombie game but that's pretty much all i can say it is early access eight dollars and 99 cents english only says as full on you it's a little questionable like it's just a little bit too close to Halloween right now um, to make make the argument that now is a good time to release a game for sale on uh, on Steam that is a zombie game or a horror game. I I think you've probably missed missed your point at that 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 level. Uh, missed your opportunity. Uh, I would definitely want to put a Halloween spooky game out October 1st, October 2nd, maybe October 7th, sometime in that range, the first week or so of October, not a week before uh, Halloween. Let's see. Can't be blocked with creatures three or greater. Well, which one would be more useful? I guess that's more useful. What is this ability? Whenever you discard a card, exile that card from the, your graveyard. Draw a card, then discard a card. Sacrifice a bag of holding to return all cards exiled with the bag of holding to their owner's hand. Whenever you cast a blue spell target, player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Hmm. Well, this is all I have is just a hope that I can can attack and gain health while before he can put something on the field. He seems to be playing a much higher strategy. Like the the only saving grace I might have in this deck is that because I just built the cheapest idiot. Uh, most idiotic deck you could possibly make without thinking maybe I could just play so simply that I confuse them to the point where they don't know what they're doing uh, hmm. so every time he plays a blue card he's going to get rid of some of my cards well, that's going to stink. But it may not matter too much. Hmm. Next. And then attack. And then go. Hmm. See if any of them really want to trade. really did want to trade. Interesting. Uh, next story we have from Tech Raptor: A rare Pokemon card sells for $195,000. Which is probably to, to point out that... Uh, and I look at it from this negative perspective. If you think you have a rare Pokemon card, you probably don't. And it's probably not worth that much. Um, th this is... An extremely rare Japanese Pokemon card um, and it's still really low uh, and yeah let's see the last most expensive card to sell was fifty four thousand dollars so maybe maybe the prices are going up but this is hardly an action comics number one uh, card that that is really really expensive 
Yeah, the, the problem there is things that are going to be extremely rare, if anything, is going to be extremely rare as we've become into, we've come into a society where everything gets millions and millions of copies of everything being made, and so many things are digital where there's an infinite number of copies made. There's really just not going to be extremely rare things in the next generation that have any value. Comic books over had overinflated value to begin with, um, but yeah, I guess if you if you really know your stuff, you might get two hundred thousand dollars for owning an extremely rare Pokemon card. Meanwhile, the other six point nine billion people who may have own, who may own a Pokemon card, which is probably not true. I bet it's less than uh, one billion people actually own Pokemon cards. Of any sort. Uh, meanwhile, you've just got effectively worthless pieces of paper, and that works its way well into Magic the Gathering, too. Uh, a significant amount of overinflation as far as the valuation of cards and the rarity of cards. Uh, like I was saying last stream, it's very surprising that there aren't just people that straight up make uh, and print. In huge amounts of bootlegs and at a cheap price and there, there probably are people out there that do that it's just I, I don't know where I'd get it that's totally how I would do it though is I would I would go on to a shady eBay seller site and just go like yeah give me the uh, give me a card that that looks like the expensive card without being uh, as expensive. Hmm. First strike. That's probably the best move. Moving on, TechCraft has an article. Godhood, create your own religion update, lets you worship cats. Uh, this is an update to a game I don't recognize, which is becoming more and more uh, of an issue let's see we can go to its steam page and and see when this came out it's a mixed review that came out july 10th it's still in early access so this is a tech raptor advertisement for a game that's not even finished yet and it doesn't look particularly interesting it looks like it it's a real-time strategy or god game um, however you would define that it's just got a ton of things you may look at the top card in your library at any time add one man of any col color tap target creature oh I want the spinning wheel But yeah, he's he's totally trying to mill me to death. It's gonna take him a while. So he can look at the top of his deck. I can't. I can just see this art, which is interesting. Interesting art sleeve he's got there. Um, next game we have on Steam is called Hang the Kings, which looks like it's a single screen unity puzzle game. Get in my way. Uh, looks like there might be something here, and there's a decent amount of polish here. 59 cents discounted, English full audio. You should just concede. So, he just played this um, Affinity for Art Artifacts. Um, and I don't know, he just did some kind of animation to some card. I don't know what he actually did. Hmm. There we go. Let's 
Let's add this battle to your record of bad decisions. Hmm. So What does this do? Spell with affinity for artifacts cost one less for each artifact controlled currently seven. So he reduced the amount of cost to play this command, this planeswalker. Interesting. And then he's got abilities I can't even read because the text is so small. Yeah, Hang the Kings I'll put on the fall list. I'll see if that puzzle game has any interest. Uh, or res good reception. Oh, he's doing like damage to me directly. Hmm. For plus two, he just steals health from you. Interesting. Do I want to block? Nope, I can't afford to block. Because if I block, I'll... Uh, his hand is empty now, so there's something here we could potentially do. If I can get rid of a couple of cards. You're not entirely incompetent. Hmm. Right. If I place this, I can't do what I need to do. Which one has an a ability? Hmm. Yeah, he, he can't resolve that. He doesn't have any abilities, I don't think. Next, and then all out attacks. All attacks going that way. I think that's the right move. Next game we have on Steam here is called Everreach Project Eden. You have a character here that looks a lot like a, the character from StarCraft, the female uh, character that eventually gets turned into the Queen of Blades. I forgot her, her human name. It's, it's interesting looking and there's some visual polish to this. This is not something I can just call an asset flip first person shooter. It might be a bad first person shooter. It's being published by Head Up Games. But I don't recognize this developer off the top of my uh, head. Um, head Up Games being the publisher of several other games. Some good, some as you get back in their history seeming to be not so good. Uh, so yeah, there might be a, might be something here. This is not out yet. I saw a tweet about this, I believe. So I'm going to put this on the follow list. It looks pretty, so it, it might be an example of a game e 3 itself and just putting out a, a pretty uh, trailer, pretty announcement, and then, then 
delivering potentially a less than satisfactory experience. So we'll have to keep an eye out for that also. This is a slightly interesting story from Trek Raptor. The Dying Light is teaming up with the Left 4 Dead 2 for more weapons. It's weird that Left 4 Dead 2, which is a particularly old game, um, would still be doing anything. Uh, I guess the, the, the case here... He just, like, I think brought all his cards back from the exile. Um, no, he exiled all his cards. Um, I guess the people who worked on Dying Light, I think some of them worked on Left 4 Dead 2. So that makes sense that they would take some of the weapons that apparently were in Left 4 Dead 2. Although, I don't remember a guitar, a... Uh, like nine iron and a cast iron uh, being weapons in Left 4 Dead 2 so that's weird uh, I definitely want to get around to playing Dying Light uh, I want to just personally say out loud there, there was a fan that gifted me Fallout 4 and I haven't gotten around to playing it and that was several months ago, and I, I don't think there's any real relevancy or good reason to play Fallout 4 right now. So, I want to say again, and I've probably said it many times, thank you for that gift. I'm glad I have that game. I probably will get around to playing it at some point, but I also want to apologize because it's one of the things I ask people to do is, is friend me and gift me games, and... Through this experience, I've, I've recognized that, yeah, I'm, I really can't promise that I'm going to actually play those games in a timely manner. Uh, I've just been so far behind, I can give the excuses, uh, but I've been really, really far behind as far as all the content creation that I've tried to make for a very long time now, uh, at, at least... Almost all of 2019, it's been, it's been a bad year for YouTubers in general, and, and i just just fallen further and further behind. So, yeah, I just want to say it out loud, because that, that's been hanging on my heart a little bit in the past couple days. It's like, yeah, I did get that game, and, and they generously gifted it to me, I think, at almost full price, too. Like... This was hardly a game that was on sale. Uh, and, yeah. And, and see, the problem, What one of the reasons why that was brought up is because The Outer Worlds is effectively a space Fallout game. So, I'm going to put this to the graveyard and see what that does. Nothing, apparently. So, I guess you would always want to use Command unless you have some kind of spell that would bring it out of your graveyard um, well if I had some way to do a do nine damage that would be interesting moving on we have a game on Steam that's a bunch of Asian characters it's called survival Revelation. I imagine this is an asset flip zombie game. It's suffering from dark screenshot syndrome terribly. Its graphics don't look particularly good. English is not supported, which makes that easy. Um, $3.39. Here they have in blue text, which usually it's not blue text. Uh, this is their first work. I'm trying to excuse it, it's a Chinese game. Yeah. So you kind of recognize that even even in the cases of uh, Chinese developers, they're, they're having trouble getting their games approved and available for sale on even uh, on other platforms. That's the only reason I could see or I could imagine that they're bothering to try and 
list these games on Steam, unless it is just a concerted effort to flood Steam with even more garbage. Um, and frankly, the, the argument that Steam needs to curate their store, um, there's not a lot new to say there. Um, so, so yeah, e either you, you, your personal opinion as far as you, what you see on Steam is that it needs more curation or it doesn't, and Valve wants money, so they're not going to curate. More power. Hmm. Yeah. And now the game's going to slow down. There, there are some troll games and stuff, but most of the low quality games I, I skipped over, so for instance this game, I guess this is supposed to be the F word misspelled in Rome, uh, yeah, this, this shouldn't be on Steam. It's, it's odd that this wouldn't even be caught, like that's not a terrible, terribly creative miss mispronunciation or misspelling of the F word. Well, I've definitely lost more than three times at this point on the brawl mode, so it, it does seem like you just are there. I probably should go in, into this and just put more more mana cards. Then. Like, let's Let's learn a little bit here and evolve. I think that's probably the idea of the brawl mode. Is to learn and evolve. Uh, your deck building. And, and particularly for me, that would mean going from zero to something. Uh, next, Techcraft has an article here. Costume Quest and Soma are free on the Epic Games Store next week. So... Uh, right now it's Layers of Fear and Cube 2. So two more games that I suppose it, if you've already been forced into making an Epic Store account, you might as well get these free games. Uh, if anything, I imagine it probably hurts the Epic Games Store in some way to, to have to pay, although maybe it doesn't hurt them at all. Maybe they're not paying the creators at all to give away these free copies. Um, whenever you gain a life. There we go. That's this card and this card synergize nicely. This card probably not useful. It's useful. That's another thing. Hmm. There we go. Oops. I uh, should have attacked with that, I think, but maybe not. No, there's really no reason why I shouldn't have attacked. Can't block or activate its abilities. Hmm. Put that on the field too. All attack. Hmm. And next turn, play this because he hasn't really played anything. So, making everything more expensive for him would be nice. Uh, Game of Sutra has an article here. Another top Twitch streamer has switched over the mixer. This time it's Michael Shroud Gresky. Grzeski. Um, he's going to be streaming exclusively uh, uh, on mixer. Let's see, I'm not sure what... He really 
you play player battlegrounds and apex legends or ubisoft's rainbow six siege which we do have i think some big news from rainbow six siege to talk about uh no not from rainbow six siege per se but from ubisoft so when we get to that article kind of some massive news that isn't super surprising Let's see sacrifice another permanent when the sacrifice is permanent put a 1-1 counter on him and draw a card okay double strike Analyzed and found hmm. wanting. So next and attack, 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 and go. You can block whatever you want, it's not going to help you. In the turn. Uh, Gamatsu has an article here. Dusk Diver launch trailer is now available. Dusk Diver, I believe, action game. I think it's kind of like a Persona game, if I recall correctly. Let's jump through this. Oh, by the way, I installed a plugin so that these videos of embedded YouTube videos are supposed to not. Yeah, this looks like it's mostly a visual novel, but it has some RPG elements, too. Um, yeah, it looks like a Persona thing. So, theoretically, when these videos get to the end, we'll no longer see the suggested videos at the end, which, frankly, go all over the place. Like, So, yeah, just pure blackness. That's what I need for presentation quality. <laughs> there instead of looking at an anime game that's a visual novel and then being immediately suggested to some not safe for youtube youtube video that's still somehow on youtube all right all right let's see we will block that perfectly fine and kill that unless you want to cast a spell and then I can't do anything anyways. Can I activate an ability? Like, at what point can I activate a Planeswalker ability? Only during my main phase turn? Hmm. Didn't know that guy had double strike. Plus two. Double strike, and then I guess these don't have flying, so I can attack with that, and he could defend with that, so we'll just attack with that one. Hmm. hmm. So when you look at it, it says two mana plus a white or blue. When I get, don't look at it, it says four because the cost is modified. It feels like there should be a better system here. When I right click it, it says two again. How you even know, like what kind of modifier or token would you have to put on a card uh, specifically to not trick somebody into forgetting that 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 was the cost of being modified five turns down the road maybe the brawl format in particular has some problems because of things like that um
Well, I've got to do something to stop that or I am dead. Target opponent sacrifices a creature that attacked or blocked this turn. Um, can't. Hmm. Can't do that. That gets it down to a nine. Yeah, that doesn't help. Hmm. Well, it maybe turned off its trample ability. And so maybe that saves me for one more turn. Next, we have a game from Gamatsu here for the PS4. The Rio's work is never done. It's due out February 27, 2020. Looks like it's a visual novel, if I was to guess. Um, it's based on a light novel manga and anime series, so it must be pretty um, interesting. Ryo maybe is a teacher. Consists of adventure, shogi, and quiz parts. Isn't shogi the Japanese chess? Ah, yeah. The, these symbols here are the Japanese chess style, so this is a visual novel around Japanese chess as far as I can figure. And Rio is probably the teacher of Japanese chess. If I'm, or either I'm going right about that, or I'm going off on a very white, weird tangent. All right, so let's see if we can improve this then. Um, clearly, the thing we need more than anything else is more land. So let's get that up to start with. 14, 15, 16. Okay, and then let's get rid of things that don't matter. Whenever it attacks, target attacking creature uh, without flying gains flying until the end of it. So it gives flying to something else. Let's get rid of this. That's not that useful. I like that. Hmm. Let's get rid of that. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's get rid of that. Whenever you a white creature you control's attacks gains one life. Let's get rid of that. Hmm. Plus one, plus one till the end of the turn. Whenever you gain a life. Hmm. This one seems like it's so heavily around the concept of knights that it doesn't make sense. There's a spell that we have that I think is going to be a problem. So let's get rid of that. Can't attack or block is fine. But there's one that's just can't block and does something else. This Gideon's Triumph, probably not worth having. So one more card to get rid of. Hmm. Destroy, target, or we'll get rid of that. All right. So I think that's, that's some improvement there. And I guess that's the idea, is to just... Keep on tweaking your deck, keep on improving it until you have something that resembles a good Brawl deck. Although, um, in all actuality, it's still not going to be a good Magic deck because most Magic decks 
sitting around having it, multiple copies of cards and this doesn't really light you do that next we have an article here from Gamatsu Panzer Dragoon remake adds a PC version due out this winter great that's particularly what I was uh, interested in hearing like more remakes of games coming to PC and more new games coming to PC and this Panzer Dragoon game still might play pretty awfully like flying games are very iffy but if it plays well uh, something I would certainly want to play I've never actually played a Panzer Dragoon game due out this winter is a little odd to say that when we are so close to winter anyways but Oh, we're in winter potentially we're in fall right now but and they can't decide which spell to cast the play that lets you spend as much of your available mana as possible is generally better thank you for that hint seems like we're in a long wait time uh, Gamatsu has an article here 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim Stairway to Demise trailer and Princess Crown PS4 gameplay a first in a series of visual memory trailers. Um, I believe this is a visual novel game. When in doubt, call the visual novel game. Looks like it might have a little bit more action, or at least you're walking around a lot in a visual novel, which you don't really do. Um, there might be something to to be said this is definitely a different art style too uh, there, there really might be something said though to the concept of just having monotonous walking around a city in a visual novel instead of cutting that content out uh, but most visual novels go way too long anyway so cutting the content out is probably the right move this other game princess crown looks to be a completely different game so seems like there was just a presentation with two two games let's see if you play through three of your turns without seeing a timer what did that say when you spend less mana to answer a threat than it costs you have gained an important mana advantage all right good to know so we're getting tips um at what point does this cancel out five minutes ten minutes if you don't want to cast a spell or decide to activate an ability, you can pass priority with the spacebar. Um, this is good, ex good turn of events because it gives me free time to cover the news. For the Switch, Revere Dun Minaj opening movie and Otome visual novel due out January 30th in Japan. So, let's see. Yeah. I don't know if we really need to show the opening movie of a young maiden visual novel. Seems pretty obvious it's going to be kind of like a French inspired uh, romance story. French of certain time period. Uh, what would that time period be? Um, romanticism maybe? Or romantic uh, let's hit the five minute mark here and if that if that hasn't happened we'll cancel and we'll just play standard um, unless I'm just locked into brawl and you just have to keep in keep on playing brawl if that's the case that really sucks but it would make sense as far as why it seems like you can keep on failing over and over again an ideal opening hand typically has three or four lands and if you have more than five or fewer than two consider taking a mulligan thanks like I really need these tips because this is just like the basic stuff I don't know and maybe I never knew maybe I mean I barely played magic for more than a, a few months uh, so I, I could have been completely in the blind there and it was hardly during a time where I had like internet access to look up guides or get support. Next we have a game on Steam here called Sur Surgical Study and 3D Skeletons for medical school students. Um, 
I'm not sure if that's really what this is or if this is just kind of a half finished educational software in VR like it there's probably not much advantage to seeing an organ floating in space when you're never really going to be able to work on an organ floating in space uh, unless it's like straight up been harvested and you're you're sending it off to some other person through organ donation in almost every procedure a heart is going to be in the chest cavity uh, and so you're going to have to deal with it from that perspective and that makes some of these unrealistic maybe you could argue this as a study guide but then you have some weirdness where you're seeing flat images with black bars on the side and a lot of this and then 3d images uh, this says it requires VR it's nine dollars and ninety nine cents and it says it has English full audio I don't think that this is even the best way you would want to do this though um, I'm sure there's better software for medical schools out there than this and I if you were trying to get some kind of supplemental uh, just reminder there's Android apps there's iPhone apps things that you could take with you flat that will quiz you on on all the parts of the body all the parts of the skeletal system and the nervous system and, and such uh, that would be more efficient because they're more prevalent and available in, in more situations seven minutes we went to so it seems like we just got stuck in a bad queue so we'll, we'll try again Either that or we're just really having a lot of trouble with the internet. Nope, it worked perfectly fine the second second time. So now that we have more land, a free mulligan, probably not a bad idea. Let's see. Next we have a game on Steam called Awful de Lua, which sounds if I, like the girl of the lake, perhaps, in French. Seems like that might be what that says, or the little girl of the lake. A short meditation game about kayaking. Let's free mulligan. Ah, keep seven. I still probably don't have enough mana in the deck. Um, Awful Dela is three dollars and ninety-nine cents. It says it's English interface and French. It seems like it's probably a super simplistic short game that puts me in a weird position because this might have an interesting story for what it's worth. Uh, probably not, but it kind of needs to be on the fall list. We need to see what people say about it when the people that actually purchase it. Uh, but more than likely, it's a short nothing game. And by the way, remember, these are the games I curated. So there, there was several games that I didn't curate. Let's see, next we have a game on Steam here called Hunger Tower, which seems like it's kind of a maybe Slay the Spire type game, uh, clone. There's a whole collection of kind of a weird Western animation style characters that seem to be in action combat. This feels very Chinese though. Like that's and it, the Hunger Tower itself you can see is the Eye of Sauron. So that there's just a lot being stolen as far as content and here you can see a shopping cart and that this looks like a mobile game. This is early access for 99 cents. English, Chinese, uh, 100 achievements makes it seem like it's an achievement game. Yeah, 
none of that seems seems to be high enough quality um, to deserve uh, deserve being on the fall list. So, as a person who's not really a journalist and doesn't have time to do the research, I have to throw out this tweet as is, uh, which is to say, I saw somebody retweet this. I have no idea who Daniel Ahmed is, um, but he does have this chart that's interesting that is 10 cents game strategy slash investment uh in companies so if you were going to try and do a full-on boycott of 10 cent which is uh or any game company that even is minority in a small part owned by 10 cent you would have to block riot games which it owns 100 percent of and shark Mobile, Shark Mob, which it owns 100% of, and Supercell, which it owns 84.3% of, and Miniclip, which has an undisclosed amount but is major majority shareholder. Um, let's see. Can't attack or block alone. Well, I should have attacked, actually. That was a mistake. Um, next, it has a... Uh, let's see. Grinding Gear Games, it owns 80%. Epic Games, it owns 40%. SEA, which I guess is not so Sega. Um, Garena's, in parentheses there, owns 39.7%. Activision Blizzard, it only owns 5%, so really, that is the ridiculousness of Activision Blizzard's overreaction, uh, which I guess they've made it a couple of days here without any controversy. Uh, Blue Hole, it's a minority share undisclosed. CJ Games slash Netmarble, it owns 28%. Frontier Development owns 9%. Glue Mobile, it owns 38%. Uh, Kako Games, it owns 13.5%. Ubisoft, it owns 5%. Patty Games, 20%. Robot Entertainment, undisclosed minority shareholder. Paradox Interactive, 5%. Milky Tea, it owns an undisclosed amount. Fat Shark, it owns 36%. And 29% of Funcom. That's a lot of companies to be invested in, particularly when you have to take it from the fact that it doesn't deserve to have anywhere of its success in my opinion like and, and i really can just put it out there in in my opinion the only reason that i think tencent even exists at all as a company and it didn't fail immediately is because the chinese government forced all of those companies to work with a chinese company not tencent particularly but many did choose tencent because um, because the, because of the way, uh, Tencent was slightly bigger and I guess slightly more professional, um, or slightly easier to work with. But in the trade-off with entering the Chinese market and thus having a partner with, with Tencent, money was literally just going effectively as bribes to Tencent so that Tencent became a bigger force so Tencent could then own more companies, own Riot Games for instance and have 100% share. And what's really scary about a lot of these numbers is that it's a lot of these are straight just below where I think the rules of a hostile takeover would have to be started. Like, I think if you own slightly over 40%, in most cases, you're, you're starting a hostile takeover. Um, and definitely, if you own over 50%, you're a majority shareholder. Uh, your vote outrules any other vote. Um, 
Let's see. Can't attack or block. So, it really does feel like Tencent could kind of very quickly um, Your sins take won't completely be con complete control um, of several more companies. So, yeah, take those numbers for what you want. Take, take them as true if you want to, or do the research to verify if they are true or not. Um, I guess like all the new stories I report, it, it is, I'm just reporting on what other people are reporting, so. Um, whether or not I avalanche. choose to give credibility to somebody is a pretty low bar in most cases for video game news and for me in particular. Um, you, you tend to give credibility to everybody, even though they very much, not everybody very much deserves that. Next, we have a game on Steam here called The Loophole Chronicles, which seems to be a VR game that's a combination of a dungeon crawler and an archery game in several aspects and then you seem to be going in a lot of different places but what they're showing kind of feels more like demos like now you're in space all of a sudden yeah it's feel like VR demos not a completed game it is free so I guess the price is right and it's English and French with full audio um, Go ahead and not block. Hmm. Alright. What do we want to do? Can't attack the block. Another enchanted creature. All attacks. Hmm. TechRaptor has some big news here. The Last of Us Part 2 delay has been announced to reach, quote, Naughty Dog quality, which is to say the game is not ready. Um, so, it was supposed to come out February 2020. Um, now it's going to be delayed, I guess, indefinitely. So let's go back into this deck and edit this deck. I'm still still trying to do this. Um, and let's just add more land. 20 land seems excessive, but whatever. Hmm. Get rid of that. Hmm. Get rid of that. Hmm. There are five colors among you that you control. Yeah, we'd never do that. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yep. So... The new release date for uh, Last of Us, yeah, three, th those extra four cards, I guess, helped. Um, the new del release date is May 29th, 2020. I wouldn't be surprised if it, um, 
Let's see. If I was to wait a turn, that would be the better move. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's delayed again. Um, the story that's getting built up here, and I guess I need to break up a recording after this game, is is a weird one because effectively they, they came out and said, oh, um, there wasn't going to be a multiplayer for The Last of Us Part Two, uh, which I don't think anybody really remembers that there was much of a multiplayer for Last of Us Part One. Um, so that has been removed and now they're saying the game is delayed so the game is smaller and it's delayed uh, that doesn't work well plus two plus two So, what did that do? Target creature gets plus and plus plus two plus one and get gains flying until the end of the turn. Not something that really needed to happen, but okay. Let's see. Uh, Techcraft has an article here. The Surge 2 getting the season pass and the free stuff. If anybody's playing the Surge, I'm sure they'll be excited about that. I don't think there's much more that needs to be said. Can't attack. Defend. All attack. Next, we have a game on Steam called Steel Paul, which looks like it's a player versus player game. Smash Brothers clone. Doesn't look polished enough. And frankly, I just don't think a Smash Brothers clone can work unless you have a large collection of characters that people actually care about, um, or you go in a very different artistic style. And I think there's a problem with even that because I don't think you can make a Smash Brothers where the camera is super zoomed in. And it makes sense, so it has to be extremely recognizable characters from a distance. $6.79 discounted, English full audio, and yeah. Well, the graphics here look pretty bad on the character designer. Yeah, I don't know what you do to fix that. Um, in a lot of ways, it's kind of the same problem you would have uh, if you were trying to make a fighting game series, uh, it's it's hard to make competition compared There's to no accounting for luck. the characters. Will hold. Uh, uh, you have characters from like the Street Fighter series uh, and and other series like the, the Mortal Kombat series. All of those. Uh, being extremely recognizable, you, you have to start from scratch if you're going to make a new fighting series. And I imagine that's kind of the problem with things like Blaze Blue, is that those characters are just not as recognizable. Hmm. So he's going to gain one life every time I attack him, so I probably shouldn't attack him with a 1-1 one -one creature. Hmm. Because I, I literally just broke even there. If that's your best, hmm. I needn't worry. Alright, so play this. Hmm. And then play this. Hmm. Hmm. I kind of can't do anything. Interesting. I got attack here, I'll just take one damage from me and give him one health and then take one damage. There's no reason to do that. Same is true for that. All of my 1-1 one -one cards are, are pointless right now until I can destroy that card, which 
I don't know if I can do that. I don't even know if I have um, have something that works around that. Uh, Gamatsu here has the same article, Last of Us delayed to May 29th, 2020. They're gonna really have to knock it out of the park with Last of Us 2. Also, because I don't think people are gonna stick around the long amount of development time it would take to make a Last of Us 3. Do not cross me. You will fail. Now, don't you see? Now there's a you have already lost. Okay. Plus one, plus one, and left life it. Next. This is an instant. All there. Attack. This could do deal damage to tapped cards. I don't know why I would want to do that. Hmm. Next. I guess I don't, I don't know why I had to click next. It, Why, why did I need to click next there? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know why I did that either. Not playing great. Uh, Techraptor has an article here, and I don't think this is probably very big news, considering I don't think too many people are actually playing this, um, playing Fallout 76. Well, apparently Fallout 76 private servers aren't private, and Scrap is vanishing. Update. Um, also, Fallout 76 offering some kind of season pass, and a whole bunch of garbage. Um, where is the update even in this article? Update. Hmm. Some some comment came back from to GameSpot around it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why you would be spending any of your effort or time playing Fallout 76 though. <laughs> That, that's that's the part that doesn't make sense more than anything else hmm. <laughs> this is just the beginning hmm. just gotta keep playing I guess. attack here and then you can defend whatever you want to defend hmm. resolve all of that hmm. having this instant card just wish there was a way to toggle off triggers from a specific card, even that would be helpful. Right. But the defending cards don't tap, do they? They don't tap until the end. Just 
auto pass. Just gonna auto pass. That's what I suppose I'm supposed to be doing. Tech Raptor has an article here, the Disco Elysium review, which let's see what they say about this. I think it was kind of an XCOM style game. Uh, from the looks of it. Maybe it's more of an adventure game. Well, they loved it. An intense role-playing odyssey despite some overstuffed writing. Disco Elysium is an experience that has to be played to believe. Pro's excellent writing, high concept skill system, thematic mechanics, excellent visuals and soundtrack, colorful, unique, and tons of role-playing and options. There can be, it can be a little overindulgent and little interaction with skills. I don't think I've seen this writer before, but he seems to... I'm about to lose. I'm about to just concede. Like you're getting the, the glowing orange on the edges. Telling me, like, yeah, you better move or you're gonna lose. This should strike fear into you. What does this card do? Hmm. Lifelink. This. Four more on the bottom of the owner's library. See, until the next turn, prevent all damage that would be dealt uh, to and or dealt by. So we could do this and do it to that guy. There are many who have turned weakness into a virtue. And then all attacks going against that guy. Let's see. Can I hit this guy? No. Hmm. No, so there's nothing we can do right now. Next. do five damage to that by outflanking him and then this guy will kill that defender so I guess I need to look up Disco Elysium and see if it's on Steam and put it on the follow list See, Gamma Sutra has an article here. Bethesda looks to bolster its mobile game offering with Alpha Dogs acquisition. Uh, I had to log into Bethesda's launcher because I had Wolfenstein Youngbloods installed and had forgotten about it, uh, which is probably to a direct admission that I'm not going to play Wolfenstein Youngbloods anytime soon. Um, the timing is just all wrong with that, in particular, and it's not like that, that game is, is the sound of your that good. So... That work. The fault is not in our stars, but in ourselves. 
Interesting. All right. So now we can attack with everything here. Let's see if this works. Nope. It doesn't. Uh, that was weird. Why did that not work? Prevent damage from this. Pre -dam prevent damage to this. But apparently that doesn't include effects from that. Interesting. again uh tech raptor has an article here new subscription based love love game project mikhail revealed we already i think talked about this uh from gamatsu and boy do you get a different experience uh for for that than this and apparently something here that was programmed terribly when they tried to embed the youtube video or maybe I did something to mess up that embedding. Alright, well we've got plenty of games still to talk about. We've got plenty of news to still talk about. And we are making insignificantly small amounts of progress. Um, and I guess you just keep on playing. Like that doesn't bring you out of it so if I go in here it doesn't seem like there's a timer or anything mentioning anything like that either so maybe brawls will just be kind of a weekly thing like tavern brawls and hearthstone um, for a thousand gold uh, the odds of you getting a thousand gold on a weekly basis obviously high so the the question really just would come down to do you want to spend that money on tavern brawls or brawls or uh, do you want to save that money and buy packs the weekly brawls in hearthstone were free and tended to suck pretty much and have some kind of weird non-standard way of playing Hearthstone where his brawls in here seem to be more of a teaching element to have new players play around certain planeswalkers and characters and honestly if I could change my deck and, and the planeswalker I had that probably wouldn't be a bad move anyways that's going to be it for this recording as always I ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want to friend or follow me on any social media sites there's a whole bunch of links down below in the description box and if you want to support me even further there's a link to patreon or you can friend me on steam and gift me a game off my wishlist thank you for watching have a good evening